would like to discuss about uh, CPAC demanding perspectives from uh, China and Pakistan. So before uh, going to CPAC, uh, I, would, I would like to say what is BRI. BRI is uh, one of the world's largest mammoth investment. You can see uh, the investment is US dollar 2.1 trillion. As far as now, uh, 1,590 projects have completed in 149 countries as per the World Bank uh, 2020 data. So before going to see the CPAC, let's see what is the background of BRI and what is the background of CPAC. Uh, we have to, if you want to understand uh, what is CPAC and what is BRI, we have to know the evolution of Chinese economic policy and foreign policy. In 1949, uh, PRC was founded. In 1958 to 1962, in China, they started the movement known as Great Leap Forward Policy. In that for, uh, policy, the agricultural collectivization, rural industrialization uh, was happened. After that, in, from 1966 to 1976, they brought cultural revolution. So in uh, cultural revolution, they brought state ownership, collectivization, and welfare politics. And in 1976, the Chinese chairman Mao Zedong died. So from 1977, Chinese economic policy called for, for modernization. In the modernization in areas like agriculture, industry, science and technology, and defense. In 1978, in the third plenum of the 11th CCP, uh, Chinese called for the economic reforms and the market-driven economy. So this is where connected to the Belt and Road Initiative. In 1990s, uh, Chinese gone for the reform of the state-owned enterprises. And in 1999, uh, they went for going out policy or go out strategy for all the Chinese companies. And in same, after one year, Chinese ended in W Well uh, Trade Organization Trade, WTO. And in 2013, in Kazakhstan, uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping told uh, the proposed idea of one belt, one road. In Chinese, we say Eta Ilu. Later, it is known as Belt and Road Initiative. So, why Belt and Road Initiative matters and why it needs? See, in Chinese, the over capacity in manufacturing pushed this idea. Second thing, Chinese want to relocate the industrial capacity to other overseas countries. Next one is, they want to uh, be the wealth manufacturing factory. And as far as now, they have US dollar 3.25 trillion foreign exchange reserve, they can be invested. So, economic order, CPEC. So, if you look at the Belt and Road Institute, there are seven roads, out of the seven roads, CPEC is called as a flagship project of uh, this Belt and Road Initiative. And it, uh, Chinese believe it's a global connectivity project which builds infrastructure, trade investment, and which that promotes green development initiative. The CPEC is a project of 46 uh, US billion dollar. And interestingly, out of this 46 billion dollar, 33 billion goes to energy. 33 billion goes to energy. So you can see uh, we have two routes, uh, majorly eastern route and western route. Eastern route will uh, start from Kuncharab to Gadar, then uh, Karachi to uh, uh, Skadar. So in, uh, in 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 Pakistan there is a uh, there is a there is a strong differences over which route uh, the CPEC should go, and uh, they have a lot of divergence opinion among the political parties. Because they have three alignments, Western alignment, Central alignment, and Eastern alignment. So what is the rationality behind the CPEC? Uh, the rationality behind the CPEC is, uh, uh, it is having a geostrategic significance. It have to connect two underdeveloped provinces. One is Ch uh, China's most underdeveloped province, Xinjiang, and Pakistan's most underdeveloped province, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Balochistan. And uh, the quest for energy of Chinese, and they believe it will promote the development and peace. So this is the uh, Pakistan's solution for the uh, energy. See, if you need, see the Pakistan is, if you see the Pakistan newspaper, major newspaper, you can see it, they are facing uh, total blackouts in most of the days. Their energy is 
uh, energy level is in a very critical situation. They are facing huge shortage of electricity. Uh, so, so these are the projects they have did under the built-in road initiative. As I told you, out of 46 billion dollar investment of CPEC, 33 billion dollars goes to these energy corridors. So, uh, out of this, already 10 projects completed and 11 projects are going to come. These are the completed projects. So now you can see the two alignments, uh, the western alignment and central alignment. These are the projects they completed in coal, hydro, solar, wind and everything. So Pakistan uh, believes this is a, uh, the Pakistan, see we have different perspectives of CPAC. When you see from India you have different perspectives. When you see from Pakistan, you have different perspectives and how China sees, you have different perspectives. And my paper uh, sees about how Pakistan and Chinese sees the CPEC. The Pakistan believes CPEC is a game changer. And as per the World Economic Forum report, uh, that says uh, China uh, is among the bottom 20 among 144 countries in the infrastructure development index. So that's why China want to actively participate in this investment program. That is one of the reasons. And according to the Energy Security Index, uh, from 1991 19, onwards, China's energy is in declining trend. So Chinese believes investing more on the CPEC through energy sectors will bring a game changer for them. And uh, uh, regional uh, security challenges. The biggest security challenges for Pakistan is coming from Pakistan only. It is not coming from external environment. Uh, if you see the provinces in Pakistan, they have they have uh, huge animosities uh, in terms of why they are developed, why they are not developing. And uh, uh, if you see the political parties like uh, ANP, Awami National League, PMLN, PPM, they are having a strong political strife over the CPEC. Because as I already told you, CPEC is majorly clouded into two elements, West and East element. See the eastern alignments, uh, it is going through uh, very rich provinces like Sindh and Punjab. Initially when CPEC was launched, it was told like that uh, this, this CPEC will go through the western uh, uh, alignment. But uh, it was supposed to go through the western alignment, through the backward provinces. But when CPEC was actually launched, it went to the rich provinces. So it is only benefiting to the rich provinces like Punjab and Sindh. So there is a strong opinion difference between the political parties and the important stakeholders in Pakistan. And next one is uh, uh, Baloch insurgency. So if you look the Balochistan, this there is a strong insurgency movement coming on against this project because uh, Balochistan peoples really feel like that the real fruits of economic development is not coming through their uh, province. It is only going to Punjab and Sindh. And next one is uh, debt trap. Debt trap is a common phenomenon in uh, Belt and Road Initiative. And according to the World Bank report, around 30% uh, of the CPEX investments are uh, Chinese loans. And these Chinese loans, Chinese uh, Pakistanis have to pay within 10 years. So if they are unable to pay within 10 years, they will definitely be in a debt trap. And uh, next one is the perspectives from China. As I already told you, uh, they, are, they are Chinese, the most underdeveloped provinces are from the western provinces like Xinjiang and Tibet. And if you look the coastal provinces of China, they are very well developed. So there is a uh, miscarriage or underdevelopment between developed provinces and underdeveloped provinces. So in 1999, uh, uh, China first proposed western development strategy. That means they want to focus on western provinces to boost the development to combat the regional inequality in these western in bad provinces. So based on this, as I told, uh, if, you, if you want to understand CPEC and Belt and Road Initiative, you have to go through the evolution of the Chinese foreign policy and economic policy. Same like that, why they want to connect Xinjiang province with uh, uh, Baluchistan's uh, uh, Gadar, Gadar port. Uh, it is the, the, it, the evolution is from this western development strategy. And second thing is, uh, Chinese thinks that they are having, uh, they, it's actually uh, their manufacturing capacity is over excess. So they want to uh, uh, take out their state-owned companies and they're asking their private companies and public sector companies go out of the China and invest in some foreign countries. So, so they think the countries like, the third world countries like Pakistan or uh, Southeast Asian countries, it may be a lucrative place for the investment and they will get easy returns. Uh, 
and uh, another thing is energy quotas. As you know, China, China was something uh, happened because most of these 90 percentage of the crude oil is for, for China is coming from uh, through this uh, uh, Indo-Pacific. If something happens, they can chalk it. So this they can think as alternative route. Next one is they are thinking it is an uh, uh, gateway to Indian Ocean region, and uh, it is an answer to the Malacca dilemma. And uh, as you know. Uh, in 2021, the bilateral trade between India and US is US dollar 125.6 billion dollars. And uh, now India became the largest trading partner of China and surpassed America. So China last one decade, if you see, they have made very good relationship with all South Asian countries. They, they want to bring a strong economic foot, footprint in China. So this is my last slide and uh, they, they are speaking about the security archi architecture in uh, CPEC. If you look uh, CPEC from an economic perspective, there are econo economic, uh, economic investments and uh, uh, those perspectives. But if you look from the military perspective, there is a strong security architecture. So these are the underpinnings of that uh, China want to come to the South Asia. Uh, through the getting into the uh, Indian Ocean region and CPEC having a very uh, strongly a geopolitical and geostrategic features. Even though Chinese says that it is very win-win corporation and uh, it is a development strategy, sustainable development, green strategy. But if you look at the BRIs, all seven roads from Arctic routes or BCAM or CPEC or Eurasian Bridge, it have a very strong geostrategical and geoeconomic, sorry, geopolitical perspectives and uh, uh, so. I don't want to explain, already people explained about, uh, uh, my previous speakers explained about the concept of string, string of pearls in Malacca Strait. And, uh, and uh, another point is like even the maritime silk route, uh, through this, uh, this, this maritime silk route is so the part of uh, Belt and Road Initiative. So this project, as China is getting a gateway to South Asia through Gadar port, they can think they can control the Indian Ocean region from Strait of Hormuz to Malacca Strait and from Malacca Strait to East Asian China Sea to South Asian China Sea. So thank you all. Thank you. Um, thank